and uh, we can't do that alone. We're going to start thinking about bringing in Lexi Pappas in, and uh, she is, uh, I, th I think she was part of this last year. I should have had last year's sheet as well, or little notes of uh, who was a part of it last year or not, but she's the leader of the New England Walk and Roll uh, event, um, huge advocate for FSHD Society. We welcome her in now. Hi, Lexi, how are you? Hi, I'm doing well, how are you? I'm doing great, I'm doing great. Um, how are things in your area? Where are, where are you chatting from? Um, I'm in Boston, Massachusetts. Well, right now I'm in Gloucester, but I'm in Massachusetts. Massachusetts, um, okay. Yeah, things are good. It's been a little rainy lately, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would know. You know, a bomb could go off out there in Wisconsin. I'd have no idea. I just keep doing this radiothon because <laughs> there's no windows down here. It's like a little. Oh, a little... Nice. <laughs> um, I'm so glad that you're here. I know we've talked in the past, and yep. uh, I wanted you to kind of share a little bit about you know what you're doing out there for the New England Walk and Roll and the New England chapter, um, and talk a little bit maybe about how that virtual Walk and Roll went this last year yeah so um what was it like i think it was last year um kristen who's the chapter leader for the new england chapter asked me to be the walk leader and um then i went to that vol the volunteer summit that the, uh, the fshd society does every year yeah and it was crazy i didn't realize like how much went into these walks and pretty amazing and i was a little stressed out but then they were like oh it's going virtual this year so it was actually a good way to kind of start my first walk and roll um which i yeah so yeah. it's kind of like good preparation to start that and but we did really we had a really successful event um you know i uh, sent out t-shirts to people because obviously we couldn't do that um at a certain place so i sent those out and got some um we got teams together. We had like 70 participants and we raised, wow. um, I think it was like $43,000, which is pretty amazing because wow. yes, yeah, our goal was like 20 and we, Chris and I, we just did not expect, we were like worried. We're like, what if we don't raise enough? And we raised 40, over 40,000. So that was amazing. And it was definitely due in part to, um, Chris Stenman and, uh, Kristen's daughter, Kate's team. They did amazing, like raised, over over 10,000 each. I don't even know how much, but oh <laughs> yeah, so they're teams. So it was definitely a very successful first walk and roll for, and that was the first walk and roll for New England. So, I mean, there's Connecticut, but those are separate um, chapters. Oh, that's true. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah. How about the uh, voice of the patient? I didn't want to, you know, <clears throat> sell you short on that because you were a huge part of that. Uh, being a panelist and now we've heard such such great things about um how that went and how it was received by the fda being now the gold standard i mean it's, it's pretty phenomenal yeah um, can you talk to us a little bit about that experience being a panelist for that yeah um yeah that was another thing that obviously went virtual i was excited for that i was gonna you know it's gonna be exciting to be in person but it went just yeah. as well over you know virtually um yeah, and I, I kind of just talked about, you know, how FSHD affects me. I talked about um, some of the kind of treatments that I use, yet, though there aren't really too many treatments. Um, but, you know, I did get scapular fusion surgery. So that was like a, one of my probably biggest treatments. So it was cool to kind of be able to talk to the FDA and other, you know, representatives there to tell them my story and then I heard everyone else's stories and how it affected them and my mom actually that was like her first time she did um it wasn't the panel it was another thing where she kind of mm. answered some questions live mm -hmm. um and that was like her first time being on camera for like the FSHD society so it was cool to get her involved in that too and um yeah it was a it was a good event obviously it did really well and I just yeah. read the um the what's it called the like the full report hey, there. yeah the full report that just yeah. came out yeah i i read through it as well and just thought i was i was blown away by taking direct quotes um yeah uh, and um it was kind of emotional i mean did you have that same reaction either during it or maybe reading it after yeah it kind of i actually i remember i mean this was like the summer it seems like so long ago but I remember um, watching one of them and I was crying. I think the woman talking was crying 
it just made me cry because you know it's like we can all relate so much we all go through the same things we have the same not exactly the same but we have a lot of the same challenges and you just kind of like think about it wow that's you know that's exactly how it affects me and that's exactly what happens to me so it's it helps everyone kind of relate to each other and not feel so alone and yeah it was definitely emotional <laughs> yeah it was and um because I, I wasn't I wasn't listening to all or, you know, the full live event and I was part of it on one of the call in things and I, whatever I said, and, and I actually recognized my quote, you know, in there yeah. and I, and, and even that was emotional. I'm like, I know what I said. I'm like, but I'm still like, kind of, Oh my gosh. And yeah. just to know that your words are out there and then in the collective, you know, in the, in the group, like uh, it felt empowering too. It felt that, it was a very loud voice now. It wasn't just, oh, there's a one quote here. This person over here has it. It's like, no, this is like kind of all bundled up, packaged in here. It, yeah. Not, 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 not to sound dark, but some of it was like, here's our package. Here's our pain. Yeah. And we're going to pass this to you and we're going to have you help us do something about this now. Like, we're not going to just keep this to ourselves any longer. We're going to let more people know. So right. um, something can be done about it. And uh, it makes everyone definitely have to be vulnerable in that and the fact you were a panelist i mean you really put yourself out there yeah so yeah um i mean i feel like you know if they see these stories or these instances that people are talking about and they're emotional like how can they not feel like they have to do something you know like the fda and yeah you know it's and yeah it's definitely impactful um i a few years ago now i went down to um, the dc area to the fda um where the fda is and we did like, um, it was like a landmark meeting and where they, we talked, I presented in front of the FDA and like the NIH and, and that was, it was just me that time. And I kind of told like my story and as Mark Stone had said to me before, like I kind of told the story of everyone who lives with FSHD, like, you know, how it affects us. So it was cool mm -hmm. to see now it's like multiple people coming together and yeah. sharing their stories. So it's not just like one person. It's cool to have a whole community of people. How long have you been been involved with the FSHD Society? Um, right, I don't know, maybe like 2015, I think was when I really actually like talked to them. Okay. My grandfather who had FSHD, he passed away a few years ago. Um, he actually used to talk to like Daniel Perez's mom a long time ago when like the FSHD society first started, and they were the ones that like, I believe started the FSHD society. Mm -hmm. And so he, my grandpa used to talk to her and then he talked to, you know, other people involved in the FSHD society. So he was the one who told us about it at first and I hadn't really gotten involved in for years. I mean, that was probably, I don't know exactly when that was, but it was at least multiple years before I actually got involved. Cause I, in the beginning, I didn't really want to tell people or. Yeah. So it was hard for me to get started, <clears throat> get started and like actually start spreading awareness. Kind of then the same question that I asked Heloise before we took our break was, you know, when you first went through your diagnosis, you know, period, and, and it's in your family, as you've mentioned, but kind of coming to the realization, this is what's happening with you to where you are now. You, can you kind of describe that journey a little bit from the beginning to, to current time for you? Yeah, um, it's been crazy, like how much I've changed in a good way, like come out of my shell. And in the beginning, you know, like I said, I really didn't want to tell people. I didn't want to talk about it. Um, and the symptoms really didn't affect me that much. Um, and then I first decided to make my documentary about FSHD and how it affected my family. And then everything just completely changed from there. And I started talking about it more and because I had such good, um, like my friends and people, even strangers that I told online, like they had such good reactions to it that it made me feel like I could actually tell more people. And so I got more confident and I, you know, became, I guess, a, I still, you know, get nervous and have some troubles speaking, like, you know, and sharing exactly what I want to say. But, you know, I've gotten a lot more confident and, and I've gotten a lot more hopeful as well, just seeing all the the um, research being done. I mean, when I was first diagnosed, I don't remember, I mean, maybe I wasn't looking as much, but I don't remember seeing, you know, FSHD in the news or, um, you know, all this research or these companies 
in mm -hmm. my state specifically too. Right. Um, so it's crazy, like how much has changed in just a few years. And that was only like 2015 when I really started, you know, sharing mm -hmm. my story and talking so about you, it. Lots happened, right? In, a, in like a short, in a short amount of time. Um, yeah. And I know that you've, you've, yeah, you definitely come out of your shell, if, you know, um, for sure. You've done the voice of the patient. Obviously, you're on this, <laughs> and um, but I also saw that you were on a different podcast as well. You were on uh, being on the Girls Chronically Rock podcast experience. Man, I hope I got that right. Yeah, and, Girls Chronically Rock. Yep. Yes. How 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 was that experience? Kind of to be asked to be a guest, or how did that all work? How did that connection happen? Yeah. So um, that's Keisha. She's actually um, she started the company Girls Chronically Rock. She has limb girdle muscular dystrophy. So that's another, yeah, for those who don't know, it's another type of muscular dystrophy, obviously. Another common type. And um, my mom actually saw her on Chronicle, which is, I don't know if that's a nationwide thing, but it's like a news segment type. Okay, yeah. So he, she saw her on there and she then, I, connect, I messaged her and then we started connecting and she came to my fundraiser event and I was gonna be in her fashion show that she did, but it was ended up being canceled. So then she asked me to be on the podcast. Um, so yeah, that was, it's awesome to like meet these people, especially when we don't even have the exact same disability, but we relate so much and right. we're friends and it's cool. I just love meeting all these new people. And, and actually today, right now, I think the first through like the fourth, I did a, I recorded a panel for another rare disease summit. Um, and we, it was about called telling rare stories. So basically how we were able to tell our rare stories. And obviously I told mine through my documentary and film. So it's just cool to be involved in all these opportunities. And obviously all that comes from, you know, in, uh, initially being involved in FSHD society. So. Yeah, it's done. It's, it's done a lot. And when I found that podcast, I, I listened to it and enjoyed it and just having you share your story that way. And like kind of our messages um, as you spread it, like between different like boundaries like okay she has a different type of muscular dystrophy but now people listening to her podcast know about ours and and so on yeah. kind of that cross pollination is is always good to hear and then sharing the stories have you have you worked on more documentary type work since um i've done i did a documentary like a, a humorous one or comedic one with my boyfriend about his dad um which ended up doing really well but not related to like disabilities yeah. or anything but that was an awesome documentary. But I did actually, the reason I started with that was because a filmmaker in the area where I live wanted to make a documentary about me, about like filmmaking with FSHD. And he was like, well, are you working on any films right now? And we could like film that. And I was like, oh, not right now. And then my boyfriend and I were talking and I was like, why don't we just make that documentary we've been wanting to make? So yeah. I guess that's how it got kickstarted. But <laughs> I do want to, um, yeah, I do want to create more documentaries about like disabilities and I'm not sure exactly what I want to do, but I do want to be more involved in film and disabilities because I think, I think it's like a great way to tell people's story through film because it's just more genuine and, you know, you get rid of all that medical jargon and it's more down to earth and you can really understand someone's perspective from being like yeah. on camera and seeing their facial expressions. So. Absolutely. Um, I think, yeah, the film side of it, it just adds that obviously that visual element that that's very important, uh, especially when you're talking about disability, in my opinion, because it kind of, uh, it kind of wakes people up a little bit, you know, it kind yeah. of really sees it instead of just hearing it. Pod podcasts are great. Don't get me wrong. I right. love them, but there is an element that you do miss unless you can put it on film. Um, you know, I was really impacted by a documentary called I'll Push You, uh, about a, a disabled gentleman that was, that he had a, a friend growing up and then they were adult friends still. And he wanted to make this big pilgrimage hike through Spain. Uh, and so his friend who was not disabled said to him, well, I'll push you. <laughs> and so they made a documentary about it, about getting a custom wheelchair and then literally 500 miles pushing wow. him through the trails. And, uh, massively emotional right so but it was the film it was it was that's what that's what got me you know he didn't yeah, have yeah. muscular dystrophy he had another form of um of a neuromuscular disorder but the point was is the film 
is really what strikes you. So yeah, if it's, if it's, if it's something you feel in your heart that you should do, obviously you're good at it. Follow that talent. Um, you know, don't, don't deprive the world of it, I guess. Yeah. I, um, I, I know when with film, it's like, you can really see, like I could show, you know, how I was able to walk up the stairs this way and how I got up and you can really see, see it instead of just picturing it in your head. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I want to, I don't even want, I really want to like reach out to other people with disabilities and see if they would want to make a documentary about themselves or their family. Uh, just because yeah. I, I don't know, I think, I think, I mean, you know, not everyone wants to share their story on online or on video, but I think some people definitely would. Yeah, they're out there for sure. I mean, yeah. and, uh, you know, getting that either if it's on some type of uh, YouTube platform, but even like, a Netflix or something like that. I mean, there's so yeah. many great documentaries out there that they grab a hold of. Uh, like I said, the talent's there. We all know that. And oh, it uh, looks like someone just posted a link to your documentary oh. on the Facebook Messenger. So nice. you'll uh, keep up that way. Um, what are your What are your plans coming into the new year? You know, hoping COVID is is wiped away and we kind of move to some type of normalcy in 2021. And I asked that based either on you personally and kind of the New England chapter as well. Yeah, I mean, well, right now, actually, at the New England chapter, we are doing some virtual meetings. Um, we just had our first one where we, you know, got to know people in the community with FSHD, obviously, um, in New England. And, you know, didn't have a humongous turnout, but I'm sure it will hopefully climb upwards as we go on. But yeah, we want to do more of those. So like monthly or quarterly, I'm not sure exactly, or quarterly actually. And um, we want to, hopefully once some, um, you know, COVID restrictions are not there anymore, then we'll definitely do in-person events. And hopefully we'll get to plan a walk and, ro a walk and roll in person this year. Um, yeah. yeah, personally, yeah, personally, I would love to, once, I can actually go out and talk to people. I do want to do something like make a documentary or do something. I, I am doing um, YouTube videos sometimes. I haven't made one in quite a few months, mm -hmm. mostly because of COVID. But where I um, talk about like my disability and or I'll, I'll do something that involves my disability just to like spread awareness about disabilities in general and how they can affect people. So I would like to do more of that as well. Excellent. Excellent. Well, before we let you go, we, you talked about that YouTube um, videos that you have. Do you have a channel you want to plug so people, if they want to find that out and, and watch those? I, we already uh, plugged the, doc, the documentary there. It's out there for people now. Um, would you like to share that before we say good night? Yeah. Um, if you just search Lexi Pappas mm -hmm. or FSHD on YouTube, I would say just search Lexi Pappas. It comes up and you'll see all my videos about you know, my documentary, my disability videos. So it, it, it comes up pretty easily just because there aren't a lot of Lexi Pappas on YouTube or I don't know, it's easy. <laughs> right. So just, just search you up. Nice. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you, Lexi, for joining us today on uh, this Radiothon Giving Tuesday event. It was a pleasure talking with you and catching up. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Good luck to the rest of the, with the rest of the day, night. Thanks. I appreciate that.